Hi everyone, it's Keely here for Soy and Shane. Thank you so much for joining me. We're doing another midweek video where I do some of the prep work for Saturday soap. And today we're going to be doing some piping. In my jug here I have just a very small amount of oils. I'm working with about 200 grams, so we'll end up with a soap batter that is less than 300 grams in weight. But that's all I'm going to be needing to do these embeds today. So I've got my oils in the jug. I'm going to, as usual, pour my live water into my oils. Going to give it a blend and then we're going to split it out for some colours. So today what I'm going to attempt to do is to pipe some agave. So that will give you a bit of a clue as to the soap that we're going to be making on the weekend. Now I, there are so many different types of agaves out there and I was torn between which ones to actually do. So I'm actually going for the opal style of agave because I think this really suits the, um, the uh, fragrance oil that we've got. So the first thing I'm going to do into my bigger jug, I have got a mixture of elusive and a little bit of blueberry mica to give me that sort of blue green color that most of the agaves are. And then the opal agave is a variegated one, so it has two shades of green in it. So in my smaller pot where I'm going to do my stripes on it, I've got a little bit of firefly, actually no it's not firefly, I changed my mind. It is lemon sherbet mica and some chartreuse mica just to give me that sort of yellowy green. So we're going to pop those in there and all my micas are from my mica obsession. And I'm going to give these ones a little bit of a mix up and then we will get them ready to go into the piping bag. So as you can see these ones are still quite fluid here so I'm going to leave them sit here for about oh, maybe five minutes and then come back and check the consistency. Okay so these have been sitting for about five minutes and you can see that green has gone a really gold funky sort of color so that should hopefully actually morph back but if not it's still pretty close to the sort of brighter goldy yellow color that you often find on these opal agaves so I'm really happy with the consistency that we've got in these pots I'm going to start popping them into my bag now I do choose to use reuse um, disposable I should say disposable um, piping bags because we do get a lot of water restrictions where I live and it does take a lot of water to clean out the reusable piping bags but these piping bags that I buy are actually they're food safe ones and they are actually biodegradable as well so they are actually quite good for um, the environment not like some of the other piping bags that you get what I've got in here I've got the equivalent of a Wilton 352 leaf tip and I've lined it up so that um, when you look at the leaf tip you've got this V shape and I've got the edges of my V running in line with the edge of my piping bag and that is so that I can actually create some stripes in this piping bag to make these variegated leaves so I'm going to actually pop this into my container just to make it that little bit easier to do. We might go for the bigger container though. And let's pop that over. I'm going to start by putting that gold in first. I'm going to pull this up as much as I can. It and I'm going to just stripe my green down the edges of this piping bag here making sure in fact it may actually be easier to do this in my hand so we can make sure that I've got the colors right down to the bottom of this piping bag so I'll just fold that back a little bit so we've got a bit more control I'm going to grab a bit more of this brownie looking colored one and I'm going to stripe up the other side of my piping bag here and then I'm going to add the green into the middle so I've got that down there I just want to get it down just a little bit further towards the nozzle we can always pipe out any to start with to make sure we've got the right color combination coming through 
I'm pretty pleased with how that's looking now. So what I'm going to do is pop it back on there and I'm going to grab my green and pop that into the middle of the piping bag. So hopefully we'll end up with that sort of goldy colour on the outside and the green through the middle. So I'm just going to use that much for now. I don't want to overfill the piping bag and not be able to have good control of it. So I'm just going to start with that amount. I'll push this down. I will keep an eye on this lot in here and just make sure I'm moving it to make sure that it doesn't set up on me and that we can use the whole lot. Right, so now that I've got that in there, I have got myself one of my little flower piping nails and I also have a container um, with all of my little square parchments of grease proof paper. And I also have a tray over here, I'll just grab that as well, and that's where I will put my little agaves as I start piping them. So I'm going to first of all make sure that we've got a nice colour combination coming out of our piping bag. So I'm just going to grab a piece of paper and just start squeezing until I get, and rather than wasting that sort of bit of colour, I'm going to pop it back into my container. And I'm just waiting until we get that sort of nice combination of the green and the gold coming out, which will hopefully be very soon, and that they don't just muddle up together. If they muddle up together, we'll just have to rethink it. Oh, there we go, it's starting to come out now. So what I'm going to do is just put a piece of soap onto my piping now and pick up one of my squares of parchment. Now I've seen lots of different ways in which people pipe these succulents and because I want to try and keep mine to a certain size, um, I'm going to actually pipe myself a little mound in the middle here. Um, some people just start piping their leaves straight onto the parchment here and then work in and I just thought I might end up with an agave plant that is just too big for the soaps. So what I'm going to do is with my V um, pointing up, I'm just going to hold my piping bag relatively flat against the nail. I'm going to squeeze and pull out to create some leaves. And we're just going to do sort of a base layer. Hopefully as we get more through these, we'll get some more of that green coming through and that it's not just going to all go into each other. No, that's it, it's starting to come through. So I'm just going to create that sort of base for my agave plant. And now that we've got that going, I'm going to come in and I'm going to hold my piping bag up just a little bit and I'm going to put another layer of leaves on here. And as I'm pulling, I'm pulling up to make sure that this set of leaves actually starts to stand up. And we're just going to create layers of these leaves. I'll turn my nail so we're back to the beginning. And although this goldy colour is looking a bit horrible at the moment, I know that the, both that yellow and that chartreuse mica do morph and then they do come back to their sort of green and yellow colours um, once the soap is saponified. So I'm just going to keep coming in, making my little leaves and just getting higher. And the higher I come up, the less leaves I'm putting on and the more I'm angling the bag to make sure that my little agave leaves stand up. So we'll just put one more on the center there and there is our first agave. So now what I'm going to do, hopefully not like in some of the other videos I've done, I'm going to gently lift that up off my flower nail and place it down on my tray. And hopefully we won't be dropping any of them like I've done in other videos. So I'll grab another piece of parchment. I've got enough soap on there to be able to hold that still. What I am going to do is put a little bit more of this green into the piping bag. If I don't use any more of that goldy colour, that's fine. But I do want some more of this gold to actually start, or some more of this green to start showing in. So we're just going to pop the rest of that in here. And hopefully we'll get a little bit more green coming through. Now whenever I do piping like this, I don't fragrance my soap batter. One is so that I don't end up with um, soap batter that accelerates on me because of fragrance oils. It sets up at a really nice 
paste that you can actually work at but it also means that this um, soap paste that's in here or this soap batter that's in here if we don't use that I'll end up just popping that into a mold and then I will pop it into my soap dough bag as well and then that just gives me another color in my little collection so let's push that green down and into that gold color and we'll start again all right so again I'm going to pipe myself a little mound in the middle here to build my leaves from you don't have to do this as I said I've seen quite a few videos where they just start piping the leaves but I just felt that this way I was going to get a size plant that was going to fit on top of my soaps most of the videos I've seen are actually for cake making and quite often um, you, you're not restricted then by the actual size of your bars so we're just going to go around making these leaves as I go now I have actually put this um, leaf tip onto a coupler so if I do decide that I want to change the tip it's going to be much easier so I can get some different shaped leaves um, some different size plants as well so once again I've just moved up to the second layer and as I'm squeezing the bag, so I've put some pressure on the bag and once I've got to that sort of size I'm happy with, I release the pressure and pull away and that's what makes the shape of these leaves. Alright, now we move up to the next layer and again as I do move up the layers I am making my leaves slightly smaller and doing less on each of the layers. That leaf just didn't want to stick. Let's try that one. We'll put another one on and then we'll kind of do the center leaves. So just remembering to angle your piping bag as you move up as well. So that one's done. We'll take that one off and onto our tray. So a lot more of that sort of green colour is now starting to come through. What I might do is use some of that gold that's in there to do my sticking of the parchment paper. So again, we're going to make our little mound in the middle and now I can see that green is really starting to come through. So we'll start getting some really pretty ones here. All right, so let's start with our leaves. So again, I'm keeping my piping bag quite flat as I do the first layer just running around that sort of mound that I've made and that will start my shape right. I'm just going to push my batter down a bit and then we're going to do the next layer so I'm angling up just a little bit and again we're going to squeeze and pull up so squeeze, stop, squeeze, pull up. I'm going to go squeeze, stop, squeeze and pull up. And that's what's going to create the shape of our leaves. Now I can actually feel that my soap batter is starting to set up. It is making my hands shake the amount of pressure that I'm having to apply here. So I'm just going to finish this flat and then show you a little trick that I have discovered when doing piping and you've got your mix in your bag so we'll just get this these last couple of layers on here don't forget to always be turning your flower nail it's much easier to turn your flower nail than it is to try and put your hand into some really odd positions all right let's get these last leaf on the top there that one's looking a little bit dodgy but you know not all plants in in the real world are perfect so that is starting to harden up on me I don't want to mush this up too much because we have got that sort of stripe going I'm just going to move it around just a little bit just to try and loosen it up and stop that sort of saponification process that is happening in the bag and that should just make it that little bit easier to start piping it again all right, so let's grab another piece and away we go.
So I've actually just discovered, and I'm going to sh show you this, so um, I was just piping straight up in the middle, but what I've discovered is if I start piping and give it a bit of a twist, I get more of a rounded center to build my leaves off of, and it has actually worked a lot better on that last one that I just did there. So I'm also going to try just changing the angle of my piping tip a little bit just to try and get some different variations within these leaves so instead of having my V shape pointing up I've now changed it so that the V is facing into me and I'm really liking the pattern it's giving to these flowers so we might actually just do the last sort of seven that I need to do in this way and it will also give a slightly different look to some of the plants that they're not all virtually the same Oops, we'll get that one in there. So although there are kind of guidelines on how you should be using um, the piping tips, when you actually change the direction in which you're holding them, you will get different effects from them and different styles of leaves. So I'm actually really happy with how that one's come up. So we'll get this one off and onto the tray. And then I have six more to do, and I'm hoping that we have got enough piping in that bag to complete them. So I pretty much have got all of 17 of the agave plants that I'm going to need for the soap and I'm also going to get just a couple of extras out of this remaining batter just to just in case anything does happen we can um, pick and select which ones we want to use. What I'll do is once I've got this finished piped I will be popping the tray into the fridge for about 20 minutes just to let it set up and that becomes manageable for me to take them off the paper and to pop them onto the top of the soaps. I hope you've enjoyed watching how I am making these agave plants to go onto Saturday soap. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you've got any questions, I will certainly get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Um, if you are interested to see what Saturday soap is and you've not subscribed to the channel, why not hit that subscribe button and if you hit the little bell, it will notify you as soon as that Saturday video becomes live. So thank you so much for watching and until Saturday, um, I hope you have a great week. See you later.